Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to see each of you. My name is John Durst. I'm uh, serving as president and CEO of the South Carolina Restaurant and Lodging Association. Appreciate your being here. Uh, we appreciate so very, very much what you're going to hear in detail about the generosity that has made it possible for our frontline hospitality workers to receive the COVID vaccine. It uh, is a uh, just great example of South Carolinians coming together to be of assistance during these difficult days. Um, I have to say that the restaurant industry, the governor has said it before too, has probably been hardest hit of any industry in our state. So for our workers to have this chance to get back on the job without being concerned about these kinds of issues for themselves and people with whom they work and the people whom they serve means a great deal. Um, I'm fortunate in that uh, I have received both doses and my friends and I who are fortunate enough to have experienced that have used one word over and over again and it's relief. And that's what these folks are going to be experiencing. As I'm sure you saw in your packets, we're doing it today from 12 until 4. We're doing it Friday from 12 until 4. You'll hear more about the numbers and uh, how many folks are taking advantage of this. We've broadened it a little bit past people who are in the hospitality industry to bring in some other frontline folks to make this uh, available to as many South Carolinians as possible so that, Doctor, we can use up as much of your inventory as we can. Uh, may I now have the pleasure of introducing our board chairman, uh, Bobby Williams, who served on Accelerate SC and uh, also is uh, one of the premier restaurateurs in the state. Is that what you wanted me to say? Uh, this, this is just the way I wrote it. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. This is a great day. Over the last year, the restaurant industry has really, of all businesses in the state, has really had it tougher, than I think, than anybody else. Our employees, uh, for a long time, dining rooms were closed, the wait staff was unable to make money. Then we had to work with masks, and we're still working with masks, and it's extremely tough. Communication is terrible. This really marks a day that we see light at the end of the tunnel, and we're just really excited about being here today. And thank you very much. Hi, I'm Oscar Lovelace. I'm a family physician. We're very honored to be here today to help the Restaurant Association and the Hospitality Association uh, vaccinate. Um, I know I, before I left my residency at UVA, I trained, did all my other training here in our great state of South Carolina at Clemson and MUSC, but, um, and actually at Keenan High School here in downtown Columbia. But wanted just to say that I found out before I left that the two most cost effective interventions in healthcare are prenatal care for poor women and vaccination. And that's what we're celebrating today because uh, this vaccine is the golden egg laid by this horrible pandemic. Uh, but one thing America can, can be proud of is the fact that we developed this vaccine in record speed using new technology that is extremely effective. The take home message is that this vaccine virtually eliminates death from COVID. It virtually eliminates hospitalization from COVID. Some people may experience COVID illness after having been vaccinated, but the symptoms are very mild. The other unbelievably important achievement of this vaccine that we didn't know until we had had a chance to administer the vaccine, and Dr. Fauci has confirmed that it also inhibits the spread of the vaccine. And finally, I'm sure all of you have heard that a virus cannot mutate if it cannot replicate. So if we can just get more people to get vaccinated, we don't have to be so concerned about mutations. Vaccinating South Carolina through the leadership of our governor, Henry McMaster, on the federal level, President Trump through Operation Warp Speed to help us get this vaccine, President Biden through the American Rescue Plan to make it more possible by increasing the production of the vaccine, and our own state DHEC, getting the vaccine to those people who are excited about delivering it because I can tell you there is a huge demand 
for this life-saving vaccine. I rounded the hospital this morning on a young woman who had COVID. Her husband didn't have much in the way of symptoms, but if you could see somebody in the hospital that you're talking to about the possibility that they may have to go on a ventilator, and I'm sure many of you have heard the stories that most people who have to go on the ventilator don't come off. So this is a big day. It's a wonderful day. We got to spring forward with jabs in the arm. Thank you all so much. Thank you, John. Um, good afternoon. You know, the hospitality industry was the hardest hit industry, not only nationally, but certainly here in South Carolina, one of our largest industries in the state. We really took it on the chin in 2020, um, worst year in my lifetime, certainly for our industry. The good news is um, we're on the way back, people starting to travel again. And while, I, while the unemployment rate in leisure and hospitality is still three times that of the rate of South, Carolina, of South Carolina as a whole, it's getting better. But it's imperative that days like today and Friday, Dr. Loveless and the South Carolina Restaurant Lodging Association are doing this, and it's critical that we get our frontline people vaccinated. And that's what today and Friday are all about. And I want to thank Dr. Loveless and the South Carolina Restaurant and Lodging Association for making this happen. Um, it is a game changer as cases go down, vaccinations go up, weather gets warmer, and people are starting to travel again. Cabin fever is an all-time high, and you're seeing it out there today, and we certainly want to have our frontline folks protected. We really need to protect our own. And with that, I also want to thank uh, the other person here that helps make all this happen for our state, and that's the South Carolina Governor, Henry McMaster. Governor? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that standing ovation. <laughs> uh, and as, as Dwayne said, as we start to travel again around the state, we'll also be having some visitors yes, sir. From, from out of state, and they will rediscover what they knew before, and that is that they've told me over and over, people say, I can tell when I'm in South Carolina without even seeing a sign. I said, well, how do you tell? They said, well, because when I go to the convenience store or go to the restaurant, between getting my food or whatever and leaving and paying, the, the person in charge, the cashier, will call me honey, sweetie, darling, and dear every time. I know I'm in South Carolina. Sugar. Sugar, there you go. <laughs> so uh, South Carolina is a, is a different kind of place. Uh, we're all very proud of, of our people. We're proud of these uh, restaurant workers, tourism, those who have, have, have stayed on the job at, and, and have worked, uh, uh, those who have uh, volunteered to participate in getting these shots in the arms. We now have over a million and a half people who've gotten uh, a vaccination. We have about 4.1 million people who are 18 or above. So a million and a half of those have gotten their, their very first shot and a number of them have gotten their second shots as well. We were on the phone just a little while ago with the, with the Biden administration. Uh, and as, as uh, Dr. Lovely said, the, this, the amount of the vaccine being produced is on a steady uh, incline. Uh, as you remember, President Trump, with great uh, uh, forethought, purchased eight, 800 million doses before they were even approved. And that, that has caused those vaccines to be available to us now. And President Biden, in his time there, has worked to see that it is given out and it has increased as much as it can be, and it is increasing. But the whole thing could not be done without the kind of spirit uh, that you see here and the, the kind of volunteer the volunteers there. In every one of these sites that we've been to since it, they began, there, there's an overflow of volunteers. People who've come forward that want to participate, they, they're not getting paid, they just want to do it. There was one place we went to in in Rock Hill, they had over 200 volunteers in, in a site like this. Uh, the record holder for the most vaccines and most shots in one day goes to the Darlington Speedway. Kerry uh, uh, Thorpe and his team, along with a lot of volunteers, put together a magnificent uh, procession over there. There were over 5,400 shots given that day. People were coming through with tears in their eyes, so so relieved to be able to get that vaccine. Uh, another another record I think is held by Dr. Loveless with 7,000 <laughs> shots at your family practice. I think is that's probably a, a record as well. But that's the kind of thing it's going to take to to be sure that our people prosper. As you know from. Accelerate SC, Mr. Williams, we had a plan 
not to shut down. We did not close down like a lot of other states did. We stayed open to the degree uh, possible. We only put limits on those places where people would be face to face or touching things over and over, one after another. There's about 30 different uh, types of enterprises. Uh, we didn't get into the essential, the non-essential, because that didn't make any sense. And as you know, if it's your business, if it's your job, every job is essential. So we did it a different way, and it worked. And as a result, we didn't close down, we just slowed down. And as a result, we are going to be able to launch back as we're doing now, following the plan of Accelerate SC, and, and get our people all back to work and, and safe. The one place that we're lagging is in the schools. Everyone agrees there's, there's no reason, no justification for schools not to be open statewide five days a week, face to face. We've urged the, the districts to, to understand that, all the personal protective equipment in, in, in millions and billions of dollars of worth are available. And we have to get those children back in the schools for a variety of reasons that you know. But we are doing very well compared to the rest of the country. We're doing very, very well. And we aim to keep it that way. And that's because of this sort of collaborative, communicative, and cooperative spirit that you see evidenced here by these, by these people. So with that, does anyone else want to say something? Haley? Words? <laughs> I'll okay. say one more thing, Governor. Yeah, go I'd, I'd like to accentuate what you said, and that is that the volunteers, we have registered nurses with us today. We have nursing students because of the American Rescue Plan, but we have the vast majority of people that you'll see next door are volunteers, represented by Dr. Ron Newberg, retired pediatric oncologist. He's out there running our drive through We're doing about 200 people in a drive through at our little rural practice on the side of the road in Prosperity, South Carolina. On a Saturday, we'll do about 500 like we did this past Saturday, but it primarily is because of that great volunteer spirit. And it makes me think, Governor, about a patient I had who was a principal of a school. She's passed on now, Marsha Ballantyne. And she told me during World War II, she said, you know, I grew up in Atlanta, but after school, I got in a bus and I went out to rural Georgia and I picked, I picked cotton. And I said, what? She said, things were different then. We were all working together. We had a goal. And I think that's what built the greatest generation, and I believe we have an opportunity to build another great generation right now. Agreed. Thank you. Are there any questions? Well, yes. Well, it's, it's, it's vital, and we have, we have an advantage over a lot of other parts of the country because we are accustomed to, to hurricanes and storms and things like that where we have to operate on a communicate and coordinate on a statewide basis. Uh, our state with 5.1 something million people is about midway in the United States. Uh, we're not a small state, we're not a large state, as, as they say, we're just right. right. There <laughs> you go. And uh, I tell you, one of the most interesting small remarks I heard from uh, Dwayne Parrish and PRT was Darius Rucker, who used it. he's the spokesman for PRT now. And he's in the, you may have seen the videos where he's riding around the state in a beautiful convertible, sometimes with his guitar in there with him. And he, he ends up with his line and says, come see why I love this place. And I think what everyone has, has said and demonstrated is why we love it. With this, we volunteer, we work together, we know each other. A lot of us are related to each other if you go way back. We got new people. People live here a long time. Everybody else got here as quick as they could, and that's something that's going to continue because uh, the southeast is where the sun shines, is where happiness abounds, and people want to be here and that goes for, for for visitors as well as businesses from around the world looking to invest billions of dollars they want to they want to come here and by the way BMW this during the during the virus produced a, a new BMW every one minute and about 30 seconds uh, a minute and 30 seconds a new BMW rolled off the line in Spartanburg which is less than they've done before, but that was their most, uh, their greatest production in any of their 
plants, 31 plants in 15, in 15 countries. Uh, home builders had a record year. We want everybody to have a record year, and that's why we're here. Yes, sir. I don't not I'd have to verify the backlog there is a backlog because and we've had at the beginning we had the computers crash uh, a number of times we had a, uh, a federally required computer that uh, turned out was very difficult to operate and of course one of the paradoxes of this is if from the beginning we've been wanting to take care of those that were most at, at risk and to keep the hospital levels our hospitals uh, cooperated we did not require them to do anything, but they reduce the uh, level of uh, non-essential uh, surgeries and that sort of thing in order to make, make, make room. But um, the, the backlog uh, is, is diminishing, but it's going to always be with us. A lot of people will go make, make reservations at different places, and, and uh, that's why the numbers are so high. But we're going to have, if everyone will have patience, we now have, I think it is, 600, something like 693 separate locations that are, are given vaccinations today. And we're still testing as well. We usually typically have 300 or so testing sites. We've given over, I think it's five or six million tests to people. Some have had multiple tests. But we, we've gotten it together. We, we know how to communicate and cooperate and collaborate. And because of that, we're getting people vaccinated, we're getting people tested, we're getting people treated, and that backlog will, it, we will always have one, but that's a good thing. And we just, uh, we, we look forward to getting more and more vaccine. And always, I was gonna say, one of the paradoxes is the people that we were attempting to protect or those at greatest risk, which are the older people, of course, the older people are less proficient on the computer registration system, particularly a clunky one like we had to use at the beginning. But we've gotten past all that now, and that's, that's why you see a lot of smiles when you go places. That's a long answer to a short question, but I appreciate it very much. Oh, I'd say come now, but they need to need to follow the rules and be careful. Let me ask Dwayne Parrish if he has anything sure. to say on that. Yeah, yes, we'd love for them to come now. I mean, we have been practicing socially distanced. We've been hand sanitizing, been washing our hands. You know, we, we've done those things and worn masks in places where it should be, and we practice those protocols. We'd love to welcome visitors now, and South Carolina is open. We're ready for them to come back. We think it's, uh, you know, you're seeing it more and more and people traveling today and more and more people out. There's more traffic, there's more retail, there's more people in hotels, more people in restaurants, and people are getting accustomed to it as, again, as I mentioned, cases go down, vaccinations go up, and the weather gets warmer. We'd love to have you in South Carolina. Okay. Any more? About yes. How many, how many vaccinations do you think the federal administration is? Uh, it has gone, we've gone up, I think, on some days as much as 30,000, uh, some 20. Uh, but it's, lately, it's always over, over well over 10. Sometimes just one provider, Prisma, has gone over 10,000 a day uh, way back. So the numbers are climbing. What about here at Mid-Jefferson? That, that's a statewide number. We could verify the, the actual. Oh, you're talking about here today? Uh, because of the, the brilliance of Haley, our registered nurse who coordinates these events, and frankly, the work with vaccines, and Haley will tell you, it, there's a lot of stuff that has to happen before we ever get here, but you tell you answer that question. Amy. So we're scheduled to do around 400 vaccines today, and then we're also coming back uh, Friday of this week to do an additional four to 500. Um, so you know our goal is to get shots in arms, and that's what we're trying to do. But the amount of work that takes place at the front end with this frozen vaccine, you're probably we're giving the Pfizer vaccine today and it has to stay in ultra cold storage, negative 40 degrees centigrade. We have to report to DHEC every day what our temperature monitoring log is. We have to report to DHEC every day how many vaccines we gave, how many we wasted. So there's, there's in order to do things right and to do it well, which is the way we're gonna do it, there's a lot of work that has to take place on the front end. The governor was very uh, right about how difficult the VAM system was, the federal registration system. 
you know, we were telling people over 75 they had to have a unique email address. I mean, how difficult is that? Um, people in, we're, we practice in a rural area. How many people have internet access? So um, there were a lot of challenges. Thankfully, now we're kind of working with people in the age group. Many of them have smartphones. They're a little bit more tech savvy, and so it's gone better. But the amount of work, we, the governor was talking about computer crashes and whatnot. Our website crashed twice. We could, patients couldn't get, once we found, once people found out we had the vaccine, our lines were jammed. It's been, it's been stressful, but we're, um, we're going to spring forward because we're, we're getting better. We're blossoming, right, Haley? That's right. Okay. Any more questions? Yes. Last question. Yes, Governor, I know we have, we sit back and we're planning on getting the vaccine next year. Have we given yet? No, I haven't had it, but, you know, I had, I had the virus, and so I'm, I'm a little bit immune still, but I'm going to, uh, I'll get in the line soon, I, before long. But there are a lot of people out there that need to get it before I do. Thank you, everyone.